now that you decided on company name, it's time to actually go out and register the company. Now, because we might be raising capital in the future, we are going to be registering a private limited company. For all means and purposes, there are many types of companies, but we're going to focus on private limited companies and limited liability companies. A limited liability company is a simple company shell where each individual person in the company pays tax by themselves. Whereas a private limited company is a legal person. It can be born, it can die and it pays tax by itself and does not pass off its tax liability to its partners. Also, if you ever want to raise capital in the future, you will need to have a private limited company as it is very, very rare to see a VC invest in an LLC. This is not because LLCs are bad, but because VCs have their own regulatory requirements and private limited companies happen to fit those regulatory requirements. Another thing about private limited companies is that each private limited company requires two directors at minimum. Now, while you've probably heard stories of companies with five, 10, even 15 co-founders, my suggestion would be to just have two co-founders. Anything above two creates politics in the team. And we're going to get into this a little later, but your core team should ideally be just two co-founders who work together and who apply for the ROC together. The fastest and most convenient way to do this is to either contact a local chartered accountant or to go to sites like Vakil search or India filings and register a new company. Remember to check the private limited company option. Now there'll be a lot of documentation and going back and forth, but in general, each person in the company has to buy shares, each co-founder in the company. In our case, because we have two co-founders, each of the co-founders will need to buy shares in the company. The typical number of shares in a newly registered private limited company is 10,000. The price of each of those shares is 10 rupees. If you multiply 10,000 by 10 rupees, you will get something called an authorized capital, which is 1 lakh. In the beginning, the paid up capital or the authorized capital, which will be the same in the beginning, will be 1 lakh for a company. Now, between you and your co-founder, you have to decide who owns how much of the company. A lot of newbie co-founders always decide on 50-50. Now, I always believe that the person who is the CEO of the company should have higher equity than the non CEO co-founder. This is simply because the CEO absorbs more risk than any other co-founder. Unlike conventional advice, the first investors in the company are always the promoters or the co-founders of the company. The ROC considers the word promoter to be equivalent to the word co-founder for all means and purposes. There are exceptions, but for this video, let's assume they're both the same thing. Promoters, have to buy shares in the company. They are the first investors. So if you own say 40% of your company and your co-founder owns 60% of your company, then your co-founder will actually have to buy shares at rupees 60,000 while you buy shares at rupees 40,000. Now your representative at Vakil search or India filings will tell you exactly how and where to transfer this money to buy your or purchase your shares. The next thing they will be doing is to finish up your MOA, which is a memorandum of association and an AOA, which is an articles of association. Now, these are two documents that kind of define what your company will do, what the responsibility of the directors or the promoters of the company are and how that works. At this point, you will also be given two small USB diskets, which you will use to generate something called a director identification number. Directors of the company are people who are actually involved in the day to day activities of the company. In this case, the promoters will also be the directors will also be the co-founders. Now, when I started my first company, all of this signing kind of frustrated me, right? I'd have to sign one document and then there was another document. I got confused because I felt like I didn't clearly understand all of these documents in one go. The good thing is that you don't have to. These are generic documents that almost every company in the world in their respective jurisdictions will sign. In the future, you are going to get a chartered accountant who helps you out especially during auditing season and will run you through what's important and what's not. 